In this video we are going to see about, one sample t-test, in hypothesis testing. What is one sample t-test? If there is one group being compared, against a standard value, perform a one sample t-test. For example, you might want to know how your sample mean compares to the population mean. You should run a one sample t-test when you don't know the population standard deviation or you have a small sample size. Assumptions of the one sample t-test The following three assumptions we made, before applying t-test. 1. Data is independent. 2. Data is collected randomly. For example, with simple random sampling. 3. The data is approximately normally distributed. Formula for one sample t-test. The following formula can be employed to compute a t-test. t-test equals x bar minus mu divided by s divided by square root of n, where x bar equals sample mean, mu equals population mean, s equals standard deviation of sample, n equals number of observation. Steps to perform hypothesis testing. 1. Check assumptions and write hypotheses. Data must be quantitative. In order to use the t-distribution, to approximate the sampling distribution, either the sample size must be large, or the population must be known to be normally distributed. The possible combinations of null and alternative hypotheses are, where mu0 is the hypothesized population mean. 2. Calculate the test statistic. For the test of one group mean, we will be using a test statistic. 3. Determine the p-value. When testing hypotheses about a mean or mean difference, a t-distribution is used to find the p-value. These t-distributions are indexed by a quantity called degrees of freedom, calculated as df equals n minus 1 for the situation involving a test of one mean or test of mean difference. The p-value can be found using p-value table. 4. Make a decision. If p less than equals to alpha, reject the null hypothesis. If p greater than apla, fail to reject the null hypothesis. 5. State a real-world conclusion. Based on your decision in step 4, write a conclusion in terms of the original research question. Examples of one samples t-test. Example 1. Problem statement. We have the potato yield from 12 different farms. We know that, the standard potato yield for the given variety is mu equals 20, x equals, 21.5, 24.5, 18.5, 17.2, 14.5, 23.2, 22.1, 20.5, 19.4, 18.1, 24.1, 18.5. Test if the potato yield from these farms is significantly better than the standard yield. Solution. Step 1. Define the null and alternate hypothesis. H0. X bar equals 20. H1. X bar greater than 20 n equals 12. Since this is one sample t-test, the degree of freedom equals n minus 1 equals 12 minus 1 equals 11. Let's set alpha equals 0.05 to meet 95% confidence level. Step 2. Calculate the test statistic. T. T-test equals x bar minus mu divided by s divided by square root of n where x bar equals sample mean mu equals population mean s equals standard deviation of sample n equals number of observation one calculate sample mean x bar equals 20.175 two calculate sample standard deviation Take the sum of the difference of the square of the values. Here, n1 equals, 12 minus 1 equals, 11. So, 100.7 divided by 11, equals 
s equals square root of 9.16 equals 3.0211. Three substitute in the t statistic formula t test equals x bar minus mu divided by s divided by square root of n t score equals 20.175 minus 20 divided by 3.0211 divided by square root of 12 equals 0 0.2006 step 3 find the t critical confidence level equals 0.95 Alpha equals 0.05. For one tailed test, look under 0.05 column. For degree of freedom, df equals 12 minus 1 equals 11, t critical equals 1.796. Now you might wonder why one tailed test was chosen. This is because of the way you define the alternate hypothesis. Had the null hypothesis simply stated that the sample means is not equal to 20, then we would have gone for a two-tailed test. Step 4. Does it fall in rejection region? Since the computed t-statistic is less than the t-critical, it does not fall in the rejection region. Clearly, the calculated t-statistic does not fall in the rejection region. So, we do not reject the null hypothesis. Example 2. If you want to test a car manufacturer's claim that their cars give a highway mileage of 20 kmpl, on an average. You sample 10 cars from the dealership, measure their mileage, and use the t-test to determine if the manufacturer's claim is true. Example 3. A customer service company wants to know if their support agents are performing on par with industry standards. According to a report, the standard mean resolution time is 20 minutes per ticket. The sample group has a mean at 21 minutes per ticket, with a standard deviation of 7 minutes. Can you tell if the company's support performance is better than the industry standard or not? Example 4. A farming company wants to know if a new fertilizer has improved crop yield or not. Historic data shows the average yield of the farm is 20 ton per acre. They decide to test a new organic fertilizer on a smaller sample of farms and observe the new yield as 20.175 ton per acre, with a standard deviation of 3.02 ton for 12 different farms. Did the new fertilizer work? Example 5. Let's perform a one sample t test. In the population, the average IQ is 100. A team of scientists wants to test a new medication to see if it has either a positive or negative effect on intelligence or no effect at all. A sample of 30 participants who have taken the medication has a mean of 140 with a standard deviation of 20. Did the medication affect intelligence? Use alpha equals 0.05. Let's begin. 1. Define null and alternative hypotheses. H0, mu equals 100. H1, mu not equals to 100. 2. State alpha. Alpha equals 0.05. 3. Calculate degrees of freedom. Df equals n minus 1 equals 30 minus 1 equals 29. 4. State decision rule. Using an alpha of 0.05, with a two-tailed test with 29 degrees of freedom, we would expect our distribution to look something like this. Use the t-table to look up a two-tailed test with 29 degrees of freedom and an alpha of 0.05. We find a critical value of 2.0452. Thus, our decision rule for this two-tailed test is if t is less than minus 2.0452, or greater than 2.0452, reject the null hypothesis. 5. Calculate test statistic. 6. State results. t equals 10.96. Result. Reject the null hypothesis. 7. State conclusion. Medication significantly affected intelligence. t equals 10.96 p less than 0 
If you have any doubts regarding this topic, please comment down below, I will respond as per my best. Signing out.